Python has definitely experienced a meteoric rise in popularity over the past decade, known for its simplicity, readability, and versatility. Python has become the go-to language for a wide range of applications, from web development and data analysis to artificial intelligence and machine learning. One of Python's biggest strengths lies in its extensive community support and vast ecosystem of libraries and frameworks. Developers can leverage these resources to accelerate their projects and streamline their workflows, making Python an attractive choice for both beginners and experienced programmers. However, every language faces its own set of challenges, and Python is no exception. As Python continues to evolve, some developers have raised concerns about its performance, particularly when it comes to computationally intensive tasks. So welcome back to our channel. In today's video, we are going to address the question on many developers' minds. Is Python dying? But before we dive into that, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. And an interesting part before that, if you are someone who is interested in building a career in artificial intelligence and machine learning by graduating from the best universities, or a professional who elicits to switch careers with artificial intelligence by learning from the experts, then try giving a shot at the Simply Learn's postgraduate program in artificial intelligence from the Purdue University that is in collaboration with IBM. The course link is mentioned in the description box and you should navigate to the home page where you can find a complete overview of the program being offered. Take action, upskill and get ahead. While Python continues to be incredibly popular, some individuals believe that Python is in decline. Let's explore a few reasons why they hold this view. The number one is lack of innovation. One of the argument against Python's future is the perception that it lacks new features and innovation. Some claim that the language is not evolving quickly enough, which may deter developers who prefer more cutting-edge programming languages. The next they think is that the Python has slow speed. Python's interpreted nature can lead to slower execution compared to compiled languages like C or Java. Critics argue that Python's speed is a significant disadvantage, particularly for applications that require high performance, such as real-time data processing or gaming. The next these developers or these critics think is Python 2 versus Python 3. The transition from Python 2 to Python 3 has been a prolonged and challenging process. While Python 3 is the recommended version, some developers still use Python 2, leading to a divided community. This division has hindered the language's development and caused concerns among those who believe Python should have a more unified ecosystem. And the next what they think is, it has limited capabilities. As a general purpose programming language, Python is not specifically designed for any particular domain. Some argue that this makes it less capable than programming languages tailored for specific fields, such as R for statistics or MATLAB for engineering. The next these critics think is the competition from new languages. The rise of programming languages like Rust, Go, Kotlin and Swift has drawn attention from developers seeking more advanced and efficient alternatives to Python. This competition has led some to speculate that Python may eventually be replaced by these languages. Now these are the critics that some developers think of Python, that Python is somewhat on the scale of declination. But we will see what's Python's future hold. So despite these concerns, Python's prospect for the future remain promising. Let's take a look at few reasons why. The number one is versatility. Python's versatility allows it to be applied in various industries and domains. It offers libraries and frameworks for scientific computing, machine learning, data analysis, web development, and more. Python's adaptability ensures that it will remain in demand as an essential tool for many sectors. The next is large and growing community. Python enjoys the support of a vast and expanding community of developers who contribute to its development and maintenance. This community has developed numerous tools, frameworks, and libraries that enhance Python's power and flexibility. The strong community backing suggests that Python is here to stay. The next is continuous development. The Python Software Foundation, responsible for Python's development, continues to release updated versions of the language. Python 3.10 the most recent version, introduced a wide range of enhancements and new features. This commitment to continuous development ensures Python remains relevant and up-to-date. The next is integration with other languages. 
Python's ability to seamlessly integrate with other programming languages like C, C++ and Java makes it an excellent choice for developing applications that require multiple language support. This integration allows developers to leverage the strengths of different languages while still relying on Python for its simplicity and extensive ecosystem. The next we have is education and learning. Python's simplicity and beginner friendly nature make it an excellent programming language for newcomers. Its widespread use in universities and academic institutions for teaching programming ensures that Python will continue to be accessible to new generations of programmers. Now we have seen what Python's future hold. Now we will see what are the critics saying about the new language that has emerged and the new language is Mojo. Now let's shift our focus to a recent development in the programming language landscape that has caught the attention of many. With the rise of artificial intelligence developers, these developers are in need of efficient tools to build their applications. That's where Mojo, a revolutionary new programming language comes into play. Now we will see the history of Mojo. That is, before we get into the details, let's take a look at the history behind Mojo. It was created by Chris Latner, the mastermind behind the Swift programming language and the LLVM compiler infrastructure. Latner started working on Mojo back in 2019 and the language was officially released in May 2023. Latner developed Mojo because he felt that Python's performance for AI and ML applications was not up to the par. While Python is a versatile language with a strong community and extensive libraries, it falls short in terms of speed compared to languages like C and C++. Latner wanted to create a language that would combine the ease of use of Python with the lightning fast speed of C and C++ and thus Mojo was born. Mojo combines the syntax of Python with the portability and speed of C. It is designed to be a superset of Python meaning that Mojo code can be written in a way that is compatible with Python. However, Mojo goes beyond Python by introducing additional features that enhance its power and efficiency. Although Mojo is still in its early stages of development, it has already gained attention and shows great potential to become a major player in the AI and ML space. It's a powerful and versatile language that allows developers to create high performance models that are both easy to develop and maintain. Now you might be wondering, why Python? Python has become the dominant language in AI and various other domains. It's known for its ease of learning, fantastic community support and a plethora of libraries. However, Python does have its limitations. It's a single threaded language, which can result in slower execution, especially for computationally intensive AI and ML tasks. This is where Mojo steps in. It builds upon Python's foundation and introduces a range of features that make it more powerful and efficient. The first notable feature is static typing. Mojo incorporates static typing to catch errors at compile time and optimize code performance. This allows for more reliable and faster code execution. Another exciting feature of Mojo is automatic memory management. It simplifies code by automatically handling memory allocation and deallocation reducing the burden on programmers and improving performance. Mojo also leverages SIMT, single instruction, multiple data support, which can significantly enhance the performance of code that operates on large data sets. SIMT instructions enable the CPU to perform multiple operations on the same data simultaneously, resulting in faster execution. The next is concurrency. Concurrency support is another powerful feature of Mojo. It allows for parallel execution of multiple tasks, which can greatly reduce overall execution time for code that requires parallelism. In terms of ease of use, Mojo is designed to be programmer friendly. Even for those who are new to programming, it maintains a simple syntax similar to Python, making it easy to learn and work with. Mojo provides a range of features that facilitate code development and maintenance. And the next is Mojo language is specially designed for AI hardware, such as GPU with CUDA support. It utilizes multi-level intermediate representation to seamlessly scale across different hardware types without complexity. And one of the unique aspects of Mojo is that it's a superset of Python, meaning you don't have to learn a new language to harness its power. The base language is fully compatible with Python, allowing 
interoperability with the Python ecosystem and libraries such as Matplotlib and NumPy. Additionally, Mojo introduces some exciting additional features. It includes a built-in struct keyword that is similar to a Python class but with static properties. Mojo's parallelized function enables multi-threading, resulting in a potential performance boost of up to 2000 times. Mojo also offers an integrated tiling optimization utility allowing for more efficient data caching and utilization. Furthermore, Mojo enables code auto-tuning, that is to discover optimal parameters for specific hardware promising astounding speed improvements of up to 35,000 times that is faster than conventional Python. Mojo's introduction has sparked discussions and comparisons with other programming languages, including Julia, Rust, and Python itself. Some see Mojo as a potential competitor to Python given its performance improvements and compatibility with Python ecosystem. While Mojo offers exciting possibilities, it's important to note that Python's position as a popular and versatile language is unlikely to diminish overnight. Python's strong community, continuous development and widespread adoption and widespread adoption across various industries make it a formidable force and widespread adoption across various industries make it a formidable force in the programming landscape. As the programming language arena remains unpredictable, it is be interesting to see how Mojo evolves and whether it becomes a game changer or simply adds to the rich diversity of languages available to developers. That wraps up our discussion on the current debates surrounding Python and the emergence of Mojo as a potential new language. As technology evolves, programming languages will continue to adapt and innovate, offering developers new tools and opportunities. And before signing off, let's check out what one of our learners has to say about our courses. You need to keep updating your skills on a regular basis, no matter what level you're at. I recently completed the professional certificate program in AI and machine learning from Simply Learn in partnership with Purdue University. The course material was comprehensive and the faculty was extremely experienced. Uh, the faculty was able to adjust their teaching style in order to cater to the overall skill set of the class. In the rapidly evolving world of technology, it's important to keep upskilling for every working professional. Stay relevant, continue learning. What are your thoughts on Python's future and the introduction of Mojo? Let us know in the comment section below. And as always, don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more exciting tech updates. Thank you for watching and we'll see you next time. Till then, stay safe and keep learning. Hi there. If you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.